Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Today, I'll be going over this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week. For the full problem and solution transcript, you can see the link in the description of this video on our YouTube channel. So this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week asks you to find an ortho orthonormal basis for the vector space spanned by, by the given three vectors here. So a good way that we can find the, the uh, orthonormal basis, sorry, I'm going to start again. <clears throat> okay. An orthonormal basis for the vector space span by the given. Okay. It's fine. <clears throat> Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Today, I'll be going over this week's advanced knowledge problem of the week. For the full problem and solution transcript, you can see the link in the description of this video on our YouTube channel. So, this week's advanced knowledge problem of the week asks you to find an orthonorm orthonormal basis for the vector space spanned by the following given three vectors. So, a good way to find the orthonormal basis for the vector space would be to use a Gram-Schmidt Gram procedure. So, I'm going to assume for the purposes of this video that the viewer is familiar with the Gram-Schmidt procedure. So, we're going to find, uh, our goal is to find u1, u2, and u3, uh, all unit vectors here, that are an, that are an orthonormal basis for uh, v1, v2, and v3. So in order to find u1, so we have to go vector by vector. So first we're going to find u1. So u1 is going to be given by v1 over magnitude of v1. Okay, so because u1 we know is kind of the easiest to find out of the three, uh, u1, u2, and u3, because we know that u1 is the, going to be the perpendicular component of v1, and this is already in a nice format for us. Okay, so we need to find the magnitude of V1. So magnitude of V1 is going to be the square root in the denominator here. I'll do magnitude. Okay. Oh, this is equal to, okay. Magnitude of V1. So magnitude of V1 is going to be equal to the square root of the sum of the squares. So we have here one squared plus one squared are only non-trivial components. And this is going to be equal to root two. So now we know the magnitude of v1 is going to be root 2. So we know that u1 is going to be equal to every component of v1 divided by root 2. So we have here 1 over root 2, 0, 1 over root 2, and 0. Great. So this is our first unit. This is our first unit vector here for our orthonormal basis. Okay. So now we can proceed to calculate the other two, um, u2 and u3, using v2 and v3 and also this u1 here, which is going to be important later on. Uh, okay, so now we know that in order to calculate u2, we first have to calculate, so u2 is going to be equal to w2 all over the magnitude of w2, uh, where w2 is going to be the perpendicular component of v2. So w2 is going to be equal to v2 um, minus quantity u1 dot v2 all times uh, u1. Okay, so knowing this here, I'm going to erase this up here so we can, it's easy to see. Okay, so we still have, as we can see, u1 down here. Okay, so W2 is going to be equal to V2, which up here is 0, 1, 1, 0, minus U1 dotted with V2. So we need to dot this with this. So just to save space, I'm just going to explain this out loud here. So one, well, we can just do the sum of the component wise of the multiples of the components here, corresponding components. So we have 1 over 2 times 0 is going to be 0. 0 times 1 is going to be 0. Uh, 1 over root 2 times 1 is going to be 1 over root 2, and 0 times 0 is going to be 0. So the only, uh, the only thing we're going to have left here for our dot product is 1 over root 2. And this is all times u1 here. So 1 over root 2, 0, just copying here. 1 over root 2, 0. Okay, great. So now I'm going to leave the first part of this as is. We have 0, 1, 1, 0, minus 
1 over root 2 times 1 over root 2 is just going to be 1 half. 1 over root 2 times 0 is going to be 0. 1 over root 2 times 1 over root 2, again, is going to be 1 half. And 1 over root 2 times 0 is going to be 0. OK, so now we know we're just going to do component-wise subtraction here. So 0 minus 1 half is going to be uh, negative 1 half. Zero min OK, again, 0 minus 1 half, negative 1 half. 1 minus 0 is going to be 1. Uh, 1 minus 1 half is going to be 1 half. And 0 minus 0 is going to be 0. OK, so this is just W2, but we need U2. So in order to find uh, W2, in order to find W2, uh, U2, excuse me, we need to divide W2 by the magnitude of W2. OK, so we need to find the magnitude of this vector here, which is W2. So the magnitude of W2 is going to be the square root of the sum of the squares once again. So negative 1 half squared is going to be 1 fourth. 1 squared is 1. 1 half squared is 1 fourth. And 0 squared is just 0. So we end up getting here uh, 4 over 4 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 is going to be square root 3 over 2. Great. So we know the magnitude of W2 is square root of 3 over 2. So finally, we can find, um, we can find U2 by dividing W2 by magnitude of W2. So let me read it right here. We have W2 is equal to 1 half, 1, 1 half, or negative 1 half, excuse me, 1, 1 half, 0, and magnitude of W2 is equal to square root of 3 over 2. Okay, so now in order to find u2, I'm going to divide every one of these components of w2 by the magnitude here, which in other words is multiplying the reciprocal, 2 over root, uh, root 2 over 3, excuse me, all times w2, which is negative 1 half, 1, 1 half, 0. And simplifying out just by multiplying this times every component, we end up getting here root 2 over 3, so we get negative root 2. I'll move this up here. OK, we end up getting uh, negative root 2 over 2 root 3. For our first component, root 2 over 3 times 1 is going to be uh, root 2 over root 3. And root 2 over 3 times 1 half, just like the first component here, is going to be root 2 over 2 root 3. And root 2 over 3 times 0 is just going to be 0. OK. Great. So this is going to be u2. OK. So finally, using u2 and u1, we can find u3. So u3 is going to be found using the same procedure as we did before. Except this time, to, in order to find the perpendicular component of v3, we need to subtract u1 and u2 all dotted with v3, which I will explain here. OK, so now we need u3, which is once again going to be w3 over magnitude of W3, where W3 W3 is going to be equal to V3 minus U1 dotted with V3 times U1 minus U2 dotted with V3 all times u2. So it's the same procedure as we just did, just kind of twice here with both u1 and u2. OK. So now we can just plug in. We already know that v3, v3 from over here, is going to be 0, 1, 0, 1. And we subtract u1 dotted with v3. So now we know u1. We know u1 is going to be 
1 over root 2, 0, 1 over root 2, 0. So we multi we, we're going to dot this with v3. So we have 1 over root 2 times 0 is going to be 0. 0 times 1, 0. 1 over root 2 times 0 is 0, and 0 times 1 is 0. So we know that the entire dot product is just 0. 0, and this would just be times u1. I'm not going to bother writing it out because we know that 0 times this vector here is just going to go to 0. Okay, so now we need to calculate u2 dotted with v3. So we have u2 over here, and we know that v3 is going to be equal to 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay, so now in order to find u2 dotted with v3, we just do again component wise multiplication. So negative 2 over 2 root 3 times 0 is going to be 0. Uh, root 2 over root 3 times 1 is going to be root 2 over root 3. So we have here a root 2 over root 3. Uh, root 2 over 2 root 3 times 0 is 0, and 0 times 1 is just going to be 0. Okay, so we know that the dot product is just going to be equal to root 2 over root 3. So I'm just going to group this all together here, root 2 over, over root 3. And this is all going to be times here, as we can see, times u2. And u2 is just from up here. So uh, I'll just rewrite this here. Negative uh, root 2 over 2 root 3, root 2 over root 3, root 2 over 2 root 3, and 0. OK, so now we just have to calculate this here and then subtract that from v3. So I'm just going to kind of do this over here to save space. So OK, so we know that root 2 over root 3 times this quantity here is just going to be equal to um, we end up getting here. Uh, OK, so we multiply root 2 over root 3 times root 2 over root 3, which is 2 thirds. This is all negative. 2 thirds times 1 half. 2 thirds. OK. And root 2 over root 3 times root 2 over root 3 is equal to 1. And we know root 2 over root 3 times root 2 over root 3 times 2 is going to be equal to, uh, excuse me, uh, root 2, oh, excuse me, 2, 2 thirds all times 1 half. And we know that root 2 over root 3 times 0 is just going to be 0. OK. Great. So that is going to be what this quantity goes to over here. So now we can multiply out um, root, uh, excuse me, negative two thirds times one half is going to be equal to is going to be equal to one third. Uh, the quantity one here in the middle just stays the same. We have two thirds times one half is again just as above here going to end up being this is negative one third, excuse me, just going to be one third, and the bottom quantity here is just still going to be zero. So now. Uh, 0, 1, 0, 1. Okay. So now let me just kind of rewrite this kind of a mess here. So u3 is going to be 0, 1, 0, 1, because remember we have to subtract uh, the parallel component, which is that, from v3 in order to find the perpendicular component. Um, excuse me, this is w3. So equal to this minus. That ugly vector over there, which is just ended up being negative one third, uh, one, one third, zero. Okay, great. Let me just erase all this down here now. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward from here. We do zero minus the negative one third is going to be positive one third. Um, 1 minus 1 is 0, 0 minus 1 third is going to be negative 1 third, and 1 minus 0 is going to be 1. So that's W3. So now we need to find U3, which is going to be the magnitude of W3, uh, or excuse me, W3 divided by a magnitude of W3. 
So we can find magnitude of W3 by taking the square root of the sum of the squares. So one third here squared is going to be one ninth. Zero squared is zero. Negative one third squared is one ninth. And then one squared is going to be one. Okay. So we know that we have nine ninths plus one ninth plus one ninth is going to be equal to eleven ninths. Square root of eleven ninths. And we know that we can simplify this to square root of eleven over three. Okay, perfect. So now in order to find u3, we can multiply the reciprocal of this, so 3 over root 11, all times w3, which here is uh, negative 1 third, 1, 1 third, uh, excuse me, I got the signs messed up, 1 third, 0, negative one-third, one. Okay, perfect. So we're going to multiply this by that. And we end up getting here. So 3 over root 11 times one-third is going to be 1 over root 11. Uh, 3 over root 11 times 0 is going to be 0. 3 over root 11 times negative one-third, just like above here, is going to be negative 1 over root 11. And 3 over root 11 times 1 is going to be 3 over root 11. Okay, and so now we found u3. So together, we have u1, u2, and u3 as found before. So as you can see here, we, have, we found u1 at the very beginning. And then we have u2 way over here. We have u2, and then we have u3 down here. So we have found three vectors that form an ortho, orthonormal basis for the given three vectors using the Gram-Schmidt procedure. So for more problems of the week, you can click on our problem of the week playlist here. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, you can click here. And to visit our website at centerofmath.org, you can click on the link here. Thank you for watching.